So now continuing on the same theme that we were on, speaking about spiritual Egypt and then decoding Exodus. And we haven't touched on Obama directly, even though we had a video a couple of uh, maybe a year or two ago where we asked, is Obama, he's, he's Farrell for sure because of what DC is in the whole matrix and the whole scriptural and divine scheme of things, right? The president of the United States. So he is that Farrell, the most powerful man or in the most powerful position in the world system, in the Babylonian world system. Now, the Holy Spirit asks me, is Egypt, is, a, is America spiritual Egypt? Right. That's why I did the video um, that I did just recently, just to clarify that. Because when the Memphis Caduce, when when the Spirit asks me, when he asks me, is America spiritual Egypt? Well, I know from my study that it is not spiritual Egypt, but it is of spiritual Egypt. But that's because I've I've, I've sought to study these things. But I said, well, since I've done certain vids making that connection with the the great seal of the United States and the pyramid on the back of the dollar and the so-called eye of, of Lucifer, Satan. Now, that eye really has nothing to do with ancient Egypt. The only thing is by the inference on this Gentile, this symbolizes the times of the Gentiles, which is a very important element in biblical scriptural prophecy, the time of the nations. Now, when we speak about the, these nations or Gentiles or Goys, actually, hallelujah, amen. Now I remember what my what my refrain actually was, right? Um, um, I was going to say, Jesus Christ is not a white Goy, G-O-Y. That's, that's what I was speaking about Goy, and Goy is related to Guy, the age of the guys, the so-called good white guys or white supremacy, the Anglo-American um, world order or establishment, right? The Anglo, first it was Anglo-European, right? Anglo-European with the um, division of Africa and Asia and the, and the world where England representing Great Britannia coming out of that of a, out of its Roman roots like Great Britannia and there's so many overlapping correspondences it would really um we'll be here a while to go into all those correspondences but a good thing is that there's a lot of other videos out there where other um scholars and investigators and researchers have touched on various aspects and areas, although very few of them we really fully endorse, but one should get familiar with some of the subject matters. As I was even saying that there was one particular video which said that the original conception of the Anut, Anuita Coeptis, a Nouveau Ordo Seclorum, actually had at the base of the pyramid certain um slaves it was going to put like black slaves there right and one of the particular new world order or illuminati freemasonry kind of videos out there they mentioned that and it was declined by like ones like i don't know franklin uh not franklin what's his name um benjamin franklin yeah benjamin franklin i don't know if he's the one who suggested this particular seal they wanted to have a symbology they recognized we have a this is their um endeavor, their great endeavor. And you hear about America being this great endeavor. Whose great endeavor? This this great experiment. Whose great experiment? Right? And this is the symbology that they came up with. A, a pyramid, right? An incompleted pyramid or a pyramid that lacked the capstone. And then this illuminated Gentile eye this illuminated eye of some goy, right? Some guy, or some people say it's Satan's eye. Some people say it's Adam Weishaupt's eye, so forth and so on. Now, the popular misconception in the zeitgeist, in the ghost 
of the age, right? And the ghosts of the age, those who are spooked out, is that, oh, that's Egyptian eye. Yet, and I'll say this once again, you can go through all the monuments, you can go through all the papyrus in ancient Egypt, and you will never find an eye, right? Of course, some might try to fake it. If this point gets popular, they're going to try to fake something like that. But if you go through some of the already established uh, Egyptology research among the Gentiles and the Europeans, even though much of it is racist, you know, they try to say that Egypt is not African and has no connection with African civilization because they find that it's a very civilized culture. And because they took a Faustian bargain, in the words, the Gentiles, the Europeans made a deal with the devil. And part of the, 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 um, evidence of that is, is, is white supremacy. It's a lie, you know, and then the byproduct, the bad fruit is European racism, which not only deceived themselves, but they went forward to deceive the world concerning Christ, concerning God, concerning the reality of it. And this is where they came to this world rulership that the Bible succinctly says is the times of the Gentiles, the times of the Gentiles right here. So anyway, I wanted to give that, that a little bit of that background right there, you know, to this particular subject matter. Now, why is Obama here? Well, we're on the theme of Pharaoh in this exodus. In this Torah portion, decoding exodus, we're talking about Pharaoh. Now, I asked the question, I said, you know what? It's interesting. Obama had before him like two ways. Perhaps he still has these two ways. He has this choice. It's all about the choice factor. Right? It's all about the will. Will you make your will obedient to good influence, right? The influence of God in Christ, the truth, the teaching of the King of Kings and his Christ, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. And just because Obama is a little black or whatever else like that, we're not talking about Obama here. So don't get it twisted, right? We're talking about our true Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, right? But what's so very interesting, right? In this uh, scriptural, in this scriptural ma matrix, right, right. Let's let's move this down right here. Let's move this down right here over here, so you can see this on the same level right here, right. You can see there's a choice. There's a clear choice, and the choice has been made. Which which direction is he pointing? Right. That's the key. Remember when he threw his past under the bus? I thought that was an important sign right there. Yes, it was a political move, you know, because, you know, he couldn't be seen to be supporting this because his pastor says, God bless America. No, 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 no. God damn America. And I said, oh, he's against America. He's against he's against the new world order. <laughs> it is a new world order. See, when they say a new coeptus, that was a new world order. And that's 1776. All right. But then. There's another connection here that in studying the great city, that great city in the Bible is speaking of Babylon. It's not so much localized, even though, as we said earlier, many cities, right, many places and many civilizations have been possessed, right, have been possessed, have made the Faustian bargain, the deal with the devil, right, for they've, they, they, they've basically, um, bow down to Satan's world ruling principles, right? And as a result, right, the God of this world, who is not the God and father of our black Lord and savior, Jesus Christos, gave them rulership, gave them power, dominion. When we're reading about the Egypt of the Exodus, we're actually reading about apostate Egypt. And we're reading about the Egypt of the Exodus, right? We're reading about apostate Egypt. When we're looking at Christianity today in its popular world and Gentile and deceived form, we are also looking at an apostasy as at a falling away. It's in the image, right? You know, they'll talk about the Bible. They'll talk about Jesus, his sacrifice, so forth and so on. But they will also be highly offended by his true race and theologically speaking, by the true grace, right? By the true grace. Because if you read and study the Bible in its own context, and then you look around at the um, those who come in Jesus' name, 
right? And all the false imagery, the whitewashing, right? In Jesus' name, and you look at the fruit and you say, okay, is that the fruit that the Bible says the Christians are supposed to be bearing? And you basically, if you're honest, right? In your spirit and honest, you have to say, no, it's, it's an anti-Christ, right? And, and the overt idea, the overt idea, the, the obvious is how they whitewash it. The obvious is the whitewashing. The obvious is how they take it out of Africa. They take it out of its proper orientation. You see, that's part, of, that's the results. That's the, that's the fruit of the Faustian. Uh, I keep repeating Faustian, Faust, Faust, right? A bargain with the devil. They have a whole bunch of literature and movies and everything else on Faust, Faustus and so forth and so on. The deal with the devil, right? That deal with the devil was offered to our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, during the temptation in the wilderness. He did not go for that, right? He, he didn't go for that. It's through the intelligent use of the word that Yeshua, Jesus, that Adonai and every true Christian can overcome the compromise with the world, the flesh, and the devil, can avoid the compromise with the devil. Now, the Egyptians... Or Pharaoh, the evil Pharaoh of the Exodus. This is the choice we had proposed. Is Obama, he is Pharaoh, right? He is Pharaoh within the scriptural, biblical context of things. He's in the position of, of Pharaoh, right? At this very time. Now, what decisions he chooses to make. You know what I mean? In this, he can be a Joseph type, right? Or he can be as the Apepa, Apophis, the, the evil Pharaoh of the Exodus, right? And you thought the last 400 years was hell, right? Now, it's interesting that most of the black people and a lot of the black churches, lock, stock, and barrel, basically have gone for the whole Obama thing, right? You know, it was a hope, you know, like, yes, it's, he's a black man. And now we finally have made it. You finally made it where? Right? Instead of coming out of Babylon, right? Instead of coming out of mystery Babylon, um, hidden confusion, hidden chaos, secret confusion, secret chaos, the lost sheeple made a wrong turn in the wilderness. And this is the same kind of wrong turn that the lost sheeple have also made 40 years ago, right? 40 years ago, a wrong turn. Instead of going after the vision of God in Christ and coming out of Babylon, they went deeper into the system, the, the system of things, right? The system of things, you know, uh, deeper into this. Um, even, even King said something very interesting. King said that, um, the Babylonian system, you know, gave us a check marked that, that was insufficient funds. So it's about money, right? So therefore, it's about money, right? We didn't get paid for all of our, right? That's what people talk about, right? Money, right? And this very symbol, too, of the pyramid, right? The pyramid, which which should, if the lost sheeple was not lost, the lost people, if, if the so-called enslaved black Hebrews were not so lost, spiritually lost in confusion, he took the chains off of the hands and the feet, and now it's been put on the hearts and the minds. So we have to ask this question again. Is Obama a Joseph? Right? Is he a Joseph type? So far, I have not really seen that Josephness myself. Perhaps you have. And perhaps you can do your video or your blog and say, well, actually, he's like Joseph. Well, show us in what ways he is like Joseph. Right? Because when you look at it, we see the other type being fulfilled, right? The other type, the prophetic type. And Ezekiel says something very interesting. And this now following up on the, the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom, right? Sodom, Sodomy, um, um, and Egypt. See, this great city is Babylon, but Babylon is a mystery. Babylon is hidden, but it's like an open secret. It's, it's an open secret. I mean, we have these sort of symbols on the back of the dollar. So it, it's very open. It, it's right in your face. But you see it, right? But you don't understand it. You don't understand it with your heart and your mind because you are 
in bondage and you are under the burdens and the debts, right? You, you, you're seeking to make the bricks. What are the bricks? Stack up the papers so you can pay off bail, bail, your bill, bail, bail, bill. It's, it's all the same thing spiritually from the almighty's perspective. It seems like different things, but you'll see that there's a current, right? There's a current that runs through it. And that current is a slave and an enslaved state of mind. But the interesting thing is this, Sodom and Egypt, the whale. You remember the whale? Remember the whale? When we look at America, let's bring this up right here. Right? You have the, the whale. You see this right here? The whale. Right? The whale. Now, there's two particular cities. Right. There's two particular nodal points in America. One is one is uh, D.C. Right. And D.C., if you look at D.C., it's like it's like a Egypt. It has obelisk. You understand? It's kind of like a combination. It's, it's, it's like that um, composite um, beast or, or, or system. It has some a little bit of Greek, a little bit of Roman, a little bit of Egypt and a whole lot of mystery Babylon, right? A whole, that's why people see it. They don't ask, what is a obelisk, an ancient Egyptian obelisk? And they call it the Washington, I mean, Washington monument. What is this doing there? You understand? Why on the back of the dollar do they have this particular symbol? What does it all mean? See, most folks don't even have time to figure out what it all means because it's too big. See, when you're in bondage, when you're in the stock and bond age, right? The stock and bond age, you really don't have time for that. You got to make your bricks. Somebody comes to you, wants to talk about freedom and freeness and coming out of Babylon. You'd be like, uh, who made you a judge? Same thing they said to Moses. Who made you a judge over us? But if you look at the nodal points, Right. Obama and the great whale prophecy. Maybe I'll call this Obama and the great whale prophecy. Right. It's a whale of a tail. Right. It's a whale of a tail. But if you look at America. Right. And this is taken from um, Revelation two, the cipher, the number two, seven. Right. Um, Revelation 2, 7. I'll, I'll show you that page on the other page when we get a chance. You see over here is D, is, uh, on the West Coast is, um, LA or California or Hollywood, right? Over here, right? Sodom, right? Over here, we have DC, right? Which prophetically and spiritually is Egypt. Right. In London, the inner city of London, we have the dragon or baby London, Babylon, Babylon, in other words. Right. Now, these are all daughters. These cities are all daughters. Right. Because we could trace it right back to Rome. Right. Right back to Rome. You see that that connection with mystery hidden Babylon and then the daughters of Babylon. Remember, Babylon is the mother of harlots, right? Harlots. They come in Jesus name. They say they are Christ. They say they are Christian. But if you know the true Lord and Savior and his word, you'll recognize that if the tree be this, right, if the tree truly is planted in Christ and the fruit must be Christian, must be according to Christ, must be according to that word, must be according to that, to that seed. But it is not. So therefore they say one thing, but then they do something else. I mean, who does that? But the devil, but somebody who's a deceiver or a deceived. They say possession is nine tenths of the law because they give the one tenth as a tithe to the devil to bow down to his world ruling principles and his world ruling system. So as nodal points right here, as nodal points, even on America, we said that America is not spiritual Egypt, but America is of, of spiritual Egypt. Just like there's the daughters of Babylon. Babylon is the mother of harlots and abominations, no pun intended, abominations of the planet Earth, of the Earth. Now, it's interesting right here is that 
political political ideas are decided or are um, confirmed from this point of the great whale, the tail, the whale's tail, which is the East Coast. But then we see that the head of the whale, the head of this whale right here is really the West Coast or California. Some say Californication, right? California, right? Now, it's interesting when we talk about Sodom. So we're looking at Sodom and Egypt. So as a reference point, D.C., Egypt, quote, end quote, and California, L.A., Hollywood, Follywood as, as Sodom. Right. But what was the sin of Sodom? Most people know when we talk about Sodom, we talk about um, it's basically like homosexuality, buggery, um, batty boyism, which one time was because of scriptural uh, and biblical um, um, authority was illegal. Right. It was, was against the law, it was against God's law. Right. You know, because you don't get a baby from a body, you know. But but anyway, be that as righteously it is. You understand? Now we live in a time of a new normal. Now, Obama has become the president of this new normal. I mean, he really has pushed through more of these changes that bring us into this this new law, laws and times. Right. Laws, these new laws. One time it was illegal. Now it's not illegal. One time the Bible was a reference point. Now it's not a reference point. Basically, it's a reference point to get away from that reference point. Right. But then even under their Bible, right, when they were in the Bible, you know, they said one thing and they did another. Right. Because of the deal that they have made that the Western Gentiles have made. With the devil, the Faustian bargain. But what about Obama and this whale? I want to share this with you right here. All right. First of all, let me share this particular site so that um, others of y'all can. OK, this is the great whale outline. Let's back this up a page so we give you some of the reference points right here. Um, OK, so here we have Revelation, uh, Revelation uh, 2, 7. And we looked up, uh, you can see this right here. We looked up whale, right? We looked up whale right here, right? Revelation 2, 7, right? And here we have son of man, take up a lamentation for Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And there arose a new king who did not know Joseph and say to him, thou art like a young lion of the nations of the Gentiles, Right. I mean, Obama's popularity basically was was, was great in, in Europe and all over. And you have to ask, well, why was that so? And thou art as a whale. Right. And then you have chapter 11, chapter seven, the heavenly Nile. Right. And so these are some of my favorite sites right here for much more information on this particular matter. Revelation two seven dot org. We have they, a chapter, chapter 15. We have chapter 11, right? Which is spiritually speaking, uh, bankruptcy, right? We have chapter seven on the name Jesus, Jesus, right? Jesus. And then we have the heavenly now. And so this, uh, this, th this reference point to the whale, I noticed that of all the sites out there, it's only this particular site. That really touched on it. only 10 references, like 10 or with a touch for, um, whale right here vis a vis, um, this particular, uh, thematic connection. Let's uh, click on, let's click on, look at chapter 15. What does chapter 15 say? Are ye not all as the children of the Ethiopians to me? Right. Are ye not all as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? A very significant connection with the seed people, with the race and with the identity right, of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos and his true people. Another important point why Obama, you know, was is being looked at in some way by those who are 
spiritually blind to be a type of Jesus Christ because of his racial, you understand, his racial identification and what people have projected on him. But what does the word say? Right? What does the word say concerning this uh, spiritual Egypt and concerning the great whale? Let's see if we can bring this up. Here, here we have the great whale right here. The great whale, son of man. Take up a lamentation, a sad song for Pharaoh. They say that this year might really be bad for Obama because, you know, he's losing his political capital, um, political capital. Hmm. Interesting. You, you see the double, double entendre in that, right? King of Egypt. And there arose a, a new king who did not know, uh, Joseph. It says, uh, say to him, thou art like a young lion of the nations. Interesting. A lion, the lion connection. Obama is a Leo, right? He's a Leo, a young Leo. Right. A young lion, a lion of the Gentiles. Right. Not the lion of Judah, but the lion of the nations. Right. So when you look back on the um, the, the 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 popularity, right, the popularity of Obama, you see a lot of his popularity basically came from the Gentiles. Right. The nations. Right. And thou art as a whale in the seas. Do you remember the Jonah prophecy where Christ says the only sign shall be given to that generation shall be the sign of Jonah. And then the second sign was the sign of the queen of Sheba. Isn't that interesting? The sign of the queen of Sheba. Another Ethiopia connection right there, another root and true black people connection right there, another scriptural connection, biblical connection, people of God connection. Are you not as a children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? But most of Israel, as, as Isaiah says, right, as Isaiah says that concerning his people, let, let me bring that up right here. Concerning his people says, hear, O heavens, we have heavenly signs, and give ear, O earth, and there are signs on earth, for Yahweh hath spoken, the king of kings has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Now, with the Ethiopian connection, we must make the connection with the king of kings, Kedamawi Hala Selassie, and with Ethiopia, 40 years later. 40 years later, 1974, 2014, 40 years later. And they're already saying that this year might not be a good year politically for Obama, right? Even though he came in with a lot of political capital, right? He seems to have lost this with Obamacare, health care, the NSA scandal, a lot of other things coming out. He promised this to his to his base, his followers, but he's not delivering or hasn't delivered on it, so forth and so on. You know, for those who believed, right, that he would be this type of Joseph, this lamentation is appropriate. Thou art like a young lion of the Goyim, of the Gentiles, of the guys and gals, right? And thou art as a whale in the seas, and thou camest forth f with thy rivers, right? With his own flow. He had his flow, his rivers, right? You know, on the black struggle and, you know, what the lost sheep who are like to the Ethiopians, to Jah, he's, he's come with thy rivers, right? His own current in that. And troublest the waters with thy feet and foulest their rivers, Kind of interesting what this lamentation in chapter 32 of his Kiel is saying, right? It says, thus saith Adonai Yahweh, Adonai Jah Rastafari, I will therefore spread out my net over thee with a company of many people, and they shall bring thee up in my net. Then will I leave thee upon the land. I will cast thee forth upon the open field and will cause all the fowls of the heaven to remain upon thee. And I will fill the beast of the whole earth with thee 
and I will lay thy flesh upon the mountains and fill the valleys with thy height. I will also water with thy blood the land wherein thou swimmest, even to the mountains, and the rivers shall be full of thee. And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud and the moon shall not give her light. All the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee and set darkness upon thy land. Now, here's an interesting connection, right? Um, darkness upon Thy land saith Adonai, Adonai, Yahweh. I will also vex the hearts of many people. A lot of people are already vexed, like, you know, they had hopes and dreams, right, concerning Obama, 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 right? They had these hopes and dreams, but a lot of these hopes and dreams in the USA, the USA, USA, right? They become too friendly. They become friends of the world and therefore they are enemies of God. And therefore, this is why Jah says, I will also vex the hearts of many peoples when I shall bring thy destruction among the nations into the countries which thou hast not known. Yea, I will make many people amazed at thee. And their king shall be horribly afraid for thee when I shall brandish my sword before thee and they shall tremble at every moment, every man for his own life in the day of thy fall. Now notice they've been doing these movies about the fall of, you know, like DC, some attack is going to happen. You know, they're trying to kind of prepare you in a sense for the inevitable. John's word, regardless of what man might make believe, will come to pass. For thus saith Adonai Yah, or Jah, the sword of the king of Babylon shall come upon thee. So the king of Egypt is not necessarily the king of Babylon. You see what I'm saying? Because the king of Babylon represents the king as we would say, the king of the bottomless pit, right? Represents the king of the bottomless pit. Let's bring this up here so we can have this in a little bit of perspective right here. The king of the bottomless pit. Now, all of this is connected with the Passover. All of this is connected with the Exodus. You can even hear within the language, right? The language is also very clearly um concerning, right? The language is also very clearly concerning the theme of the Exodus, the theme of a coming out. Even in Amos 9 and 7, are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? Now, it's interesting because they say he's from Kenya and Kenya is right next to, do you remember Obama's vision in his book, dreams of uh, his father, right? In his book, he said that all the people who were cheering him, right? Remember all the people that were cheering him, somehow they start to run away from him and he doesn't really know what happened. That's that's in his book, right? And, and that actually, you, you can hear in the audio book, you can hear him actually giving a narration, you know, a narration to this particular um dream. That's the dream he had. That's the vision he had. And it's interesting how this dream or vision that Obama, Obama, oh, that he had basically is the very same that we have in this lamentation, right? Lamentation for Pharaoh. But in this lamentation for Pharaoh that Nebiu uh, Hizkiel or the prophet Ezekiel spoke, it is speaking about the king of Egypt, but it's also likening Pharaoh, right? The, this this particular prophetic Pharaoh right here is likening him to a young lion, right? But then also to a great whale, right? Thou art as a whale in the seas, right? And so... So when we got to this point about whale in the seas is because we were looking at Revelation 
11 and 8, where it's talking about the great city, i.e. Babylon, right? Confusion, mystery Babylon, hidden chaos, hidden confusion is hidden right in plain sight. But, but people don't know it because people are enslaved, right? The, 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 the old serpent, the dragon, right? Has deceived the entire world, right? So you really can't be upset with the folks for being deceived. You understand? But rather should hope that they hear the call, right? The exodus, right? The call out, the exodus, right? Now the X is interesting, the planet of the crossing, the Biru, the heavenly signs, even recently the common Ison, they call it Ison, you know, that passed by the sun and everything, the Nibiru speculations, the connection of Nibiru with uh, the 12th dynasty Egyptian literature and Moses. We're going to touch on that as well. The Nibiru connection, the cross connection, the crossroads. Babylon right now is at a crossroads. Obama in his political life is also at a crossroads too. As we come into this 2014 year, all the pundits are speculating that, you know, it doesn't really look too good for Obama, politically speaking, with 2013 behind. Now, 2014 is actually 40 years, 40 years after 1974. And 1974, particularly September 12th, 1974 is very, very, very important because are you not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me or to me, right? Aren't you as the children of the Ethiopians, O children of Israel, unto me, saith Adonai Jah Rastafari. So the Rastafari revelation the Rastaman chant is true, right? It's true. After all, Rastafari told you herb was for the healing of the nation. Now, even this year, they're changing laws in time where herb or marijuana or pot or reef or whatever these, these, these bywords that they use for what Rastafari considers and what I and I considers to be a holy plant. Now they're using it medical marijuana, medicinal marijuana. Well, the Rastafari already told you so. And now many years later, they have come to the conclusion when sickness and disease come upon them and they try all their sorcery or their pharmaceuticals, they find out that, well, you know what? Pot does work. Marijuana does work. Marijuana can be medicinal. Now they try to package it now. It's medicinal marijuana. But Rastafari, I and I already tell you the truth. We already said herb for the healing of the nations. Have they been grateful? They've totally been ungrateful. But the judgment will settle accounts. It says reward them double for how they served us. Double trouble is prophesied on Babylon and on the nations. And here in Ezekiel chapter 32 at the 32nd degree of Ezekiel, it says, For thus saith Adonai Yahweh, the sword of the king of Babylon shall come upon thee. By the swords of the mighty will I cause thy multitude to fall. The terrible of the nations, and we're hearing about this terrorism coming out the Caucasus Mountains, Caucasus Mountains. You know, I mean, we're hearing about this thing is, is increasing. Blowback is Babylon, you know, or a bitch. You know, blowback is a bitch. And this is also where we are coming to. What they have sold elsewhere, eventually they must reap. But the sign that Yeshua gave, this is very interesting, the sign that Yeshua gave, right, was the sign of Jonah. Jonah was in the whale's belly. Wasn't he in the whale's belly? Right? Was he dead? Was he asleep? Is the black man, the true Israelite, are, are they awake? Or are they asleep? Is the Ethiopian Hebrews, are, are, are Jah's people, are they awake or are they asleep? Or are they in the belly of the beast, the belly of the great whale? Because that's one of the signs that was given. Now, how did Jonah get out of the whale's belly? This is how y'all, how we all get out of the whale's belly. All right, so we'll get into that. But you can already study the scripture. You'll find out. 
read the book of Jonah, right? And then study, well, what is the connection? Ask Jah for wisdom, right? And don't doubt, and he will show you wisdom, and you will see how did Jonah get out of the whale's belly. You see, Jonah was supposed to prophesy. Jonah was supposed to preach to a people that were not his people. Let me just give you this right here. Jonah was supposed to preach to a people that was not his people, right? But he didn't want to. He didn't want to do that. You understand? So he ran away from his assignment, right? How many of us, right, have also um, run away from our God-given assignments because maybe we didn't like the people, Maybe we didn't, you know, we had our own, our own wills, right, and desires, right? We wanted to do what we wilt, but we didn't want to do his will, right? So we got stuck in a situation, right? Just like Jonah was, he was in a situation. He was in a situation. The question is, was Jonah dead or was he alive? Right? Because if, if he was alive, the question is, how can a man stay alive in a whale's belly? Why would it say it wasn't really a whale? Some people would say some of the, some of the scholars, the scholars, they would say, well, it really wasn't a whale. Okay. He was, he was in this, this, this beast. Basically it was a whale, right? Basically it was a whale, you know, um, the higher, the higher criticism basically does not know the truth, right? But the plain and the simplicity of Christ gives us the root as well as the way out. The word whale sometimes is translated, right, as whale in the Old Testament, is at other times translated, and this is interesting, the whale, which is translated as a whale in the Old Testament, the same root word is also translated as, get this, a dragon. It's translated as a serpent. It's translated as a, as a sea monster. Right. And we, and we touched a couple of days ago on Leviathan. Right. And the connection with, with baby London, baby London and Leviathan and, and in the inner city of London, all the uses of the symbol of the dragon and their control is through the currency, the love of money. And on that currency of the money that is universally accepted, the United States, um, dollar bill we find this particular symbology of a pyramid, right? And this uh, eye, right? This the, the, this eye. And and if we go to, what is it? Zephaniah, is, no, Zechariah. Zechariah talks about that particular eye as well as being a particular symbol. And we touched on this before, but let me give you this right here for those who are listening that may want to go into it a little bit more. The eye has already been defined by the scripture. The eye has been defined in Zechariah 5 and 6, where it says, And I said, What is it? And he saith, This is an ephah, right? A weight, a measurement that goeth forth. He shall, he said, Moreover, he said, Moreover, this is their resemblance through all the earth. So when it's speaking of this particular eye, Right, this particular eye that you have on the dollar bill, it says this is their what resemblance, right, in all the earth. But if you read that in the Hebrew of Zechariah, and Zechariah means the remembrance of Jah, the remembrance of Yah, you will find that the word resemblance is better, more directly translated from the oin, right? This is their eye, not this is their resemblance, but the eye. Even on the back of the dollar bill and the great seal of, uh, of, of, of America, of the United States, right? Demonstrates this is their resemblance. This is their eye through all the earth. I don't think there's a people around anywhere on the face of the earth that does not know. If you take that one dollar symbol and, and you show them, let me show you right here. If you show them this, they know what this is, but they even know what this is by this symbol right here. Right by the symbol of the eye. Right, this this is their resemblance. Right, this is their resemblance through all the earth. Right, this is this is their resemblance through all the earth. Right there, Zechariah five and six. But see the translation. Right, the translation just says resemblance. But when you study it, 
you find out that it, it is I. So just that little segue right there. So let's just get back to this about the whale, right? The whale of a tail, right? The whale of a tail. This is a whale of a tail here. Here we have from Cruden's uh, complete concordance of the Bible. They say that um, whale in the Old Testament is at other times translated as dragon, serpent, and sea monster, right? The whale of Jonah is called in that book merely a great fish, right? And and see how fish also is was used as a Christian symbol. But then we have Christ, and then we have Antichrist, right? Antichrist. You have to look at the fruit. And then you'll know, well, what is the root? In the New Testament, the word used in the original may mean also any large sea animal, whale, a seal, right? Like, like the fish seal, but the seal seal, both spelled the same way, seal, navy seal, seal seal, a shark, or a tunny. And whale actually appears, right, in the... King James Bible as whale in one, two, three, and four places, right? And this is 2014, so four places, right? Four places, Job 7 and 12, Ezekiel 32 and 2, what we're reading and studying right here, Matthew 12 and 40, and Genesis 1 and 21. So we see in decoding Exodus, even in the rhema of the Rastafari and the revelation of the King of Kings in Christ, we see the application, right? We see a very, not even possible, right? This is not even possible. This is actually what's going on right now. When we, when we, when we look at what the word really says and what really is going on in the seclorum or in the secular. Right in the world, and it all bespeaks of the Passover, right? That is mentioned the new Passover out of the north country, and the whale represents, right? This whale of Jonah's whale, and the whale which which Pharaoh is likened. Interestingly enough, Pharaoh is likened to a whale in this scripture right here, Ezekiel chapter thirty-two. Now, what's interesting also is that this is the 15th um, Parashat, Parsha, right? The Parsha name is Bo, right? Or, um, or, or Ba, Be'a, or Ba'amarinya Geba, right? To enter or to come in. That's the meaning, to enter or to come in. And the beginning part of this particular um, Parsha or, or reading is the contest. There's a contest with Pharaoh. And it's now the eighth demand. And in Exodus chapter 10, verse 1, it says, And Yahweh said, He who be who he be, his divine majesty said to Moses, Go in, Geba, or, or Bo, in other words, go in to Pharaoh. For I have hardened his heart. Right? As hard in his heart. It's almost like when you think about Obama when, when you had these racial issues going on. It's like he didn't really want to touch on it. If you notice that he didn't want to touch on that first, he didn't want. To, finally, in in the in the case uh, with the young boy shot by that guy and that guy and everything like that, he touched on it. You know, he went to the, he could be me, he could be my son, so forth and so on. And people say, oh, he's using race, he's using race. I mean, but who uses race like Satan did? Fallen from grace in white supremacy and European racism and the modern times of the Gentiles, the Anglo American, Anglo European establishment, which is the Gentiles, the nations, right? For I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, right? They're hard hearted to the real call of Jah Rastafari, to the call of I and I, that I might shew these my signs before him. That might show these signs before him. So Moses is told, right, to go in to Pharaoh. 
And I was thinking when I when I read over this, I was like, you know, we hadn't touched on the last major things we said about Obama and the whole Farrell connection was, is he a Joseph or is he the the evil Farrell of the Exodus? Right. Is he the evil Farrell of the Exodus? I mean, while there's time, one can still choose the way, the truth and the life of the King of Kings and the Black Christ. But, uh, you know, he threw, he threw Reverend Wright under the bus. Reverend Wright says, God bless America. No, 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 no. God damn America. And he said that because of the evil fruits that did not live up right to what it claimed to be its Christian roots. So what Reverend Wright said was right and exact, but a lot of folks, they can't take the truth, right? They've been deceived. Possession is nine tenths of the law. So they're possessed by the devil's, the devil's way of thinking, the Faustian bargain, the deal that white supremacy made with the devil. Right. Which goes beyond just white people because uh, the lost sheep are in the belly of the beast. Right. So it says go into right, go into Pharaoh. Right. And it says in all and it says and that thou mayest tell in the ears, tell in the ears of thy son and thy son's son what things I have wrought in Egypt, in the apostate Egypt of the Exodus and my signs which I have done among them that ye may know how that I am Yahweh. That's an interesting translation that ye, that we may know how he is, he who be, who he be, that through his word, through John's word, we will know, right? How he be, who he be, right? And Moses and Aaron, they came into Pharaoh and they said to him, thus saith Yahweh, the Elohe of the Brawian or the, the true God of the Hebrews, how long they don't say God of the Jews, right? Like a lot of the Jews who call themselves Jews, they think that it's so much, no, it's talking about the Hebrews, right? Who are Ethiopian black peoples, if you please. But he says that the God of the Hebrews, how long wilt thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go that they may serve me. In other words, let John people go that we may serve the King of Kings in Christ. Else, if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow, 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 dun, 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 will I bring the locust into thy coast. Now, this is another area that we might not have time right here in this particular vid to touch on, but the locust plague in history was known as the Saracens. If you don't know the Saracens, basically it was the blowback to the Crusades. The blowback. Remember Bush talked about well, the new cru Crusades and everything? And he said, don't say that, don't say that, don't say that. Well, now there is a new crusade, but there's a blowback. We can You can call it terrorism. You can call it uh, f fundamentalist Islam, um, Islamofascism. You can call it what you want to call it, but that is the margin of the locust plague. And now we can triangulate this with Ezekiel chapter 32, where it says, yea, right? It says right here, it says, by the sword of the mighty, it says many people, many people, you know, it speaks about many people will be brought against that Pharaoh and against that spiritual Egypt, so to speak. By the sword of the mighty will I cause thy multitude to fall, the terrible of the nations, all of them, and they shall spoil the pomp of Egypt. People say, oh, what's happening to America's glory? You understand? It used to be a white European Anglo-American nation, and now we got all these immigrants. We have all these foreigners coming in. Well, that's what John said. And all the multitude thereof shall be destroyed. I will destroy also all the beasts thereof from beside the great waters. Neither shall the foot of man trouble them any more, nor the hoofs of beasts trouble them. Then will I make their rivers deep and cause their rivers to run like oil, saith Adonai Yah, Adonai Jah. Rastafari. When I shall make the land of Egypt desolate and the country shall be destitute of that whereof it was full. When I shall smite all them that dwell therein, then shall they know the very same idea from, from, from Exodus chapter 10. 
right? Then they shall know that I am, right? That I am Yahweh, he who be, who he be. This is the lamentation wherewith they shall lament her, right? They shall lament her. The daughters of the nations shall lament her. You know that when when the fall of Babylon, the fall of America comes, you know how many nations, you know what, what a great lamentation will go up since everybody is all connected, right? They are all connected into the currency, into the current slave state of mind. They shall lament. This sounds like revelation. We're talking about the judgment of Babylon, that great city, which spiritually is likened to Sodom. Right. Spiritually, the great city is likened to Sodom and Egypt. And we find that the Sodom and Egypt portion of the matrix is from coast to coast. In other words, we have California. Right. We have California on one end and we have, um, you could say New York, but that used to be the capital. Now it's DC and DC is based on a free Masonic, um, Egyptology, so to speak. Right. And L.A. Hollywood is based on that that so Sodom. Right. That sodomy, basically. Be I mean, the sexual sodomy, the 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 psychological sodomy and, of course, beginning and so-called emanating from the spiritual sodomy. Right. From the spiritual sodomy. Right. So dumb. So dumb Egypt. This is the lamentation wherewith they shall lament her. The daughters of the nation shall lament her. They shall lament for her, even for Egypt and for all her multitude, saith Adonai Yahweh, saith Adonai Jarastafari. So this right here is a very interesting connection here, as well as with Jonah and the whale, right? Jonah and the whale, right? So Pharaoh Obama, right? Well, Pharaoh, it's not that he was only Pharaoh. Clinton was the Pharaoh before, you know, or, or Bush was the Pharaoh before him. Clinton was the Pharaoh before him. All the presidents, right? Since this particular symbology, right? Since this particular symbology came into play prophetically, right? Equals this, this uh, city, Right. This this great city. Right. This great consciousness that that through powered by Satan, powered by the Apophis, powered by the Apepa, powered by the dragon, powered by the sea monster, powered by the great whale. I mean, can we go on with that right there? So all these, whether it's a great whale or a dragon, so forth and so on in the scriptural language. It's basically using various different word pictures to bring home a central type, right? A central type. The type and the typology is beautiful here. When your eyes, when that blindness, you know, when you come out of that blindness and you begin to come out of mystery, you know, the hidden, the secret Babylon, the confusion, the chaos and Coming out of the whale's belly is very much connected with that. The Jonas will come out because Yeshua already told us that the only sign, right? The sign that would be given to them would be Jonah, right? Would be Jonah and the queen of Sheba, right? That's the sign that would be given. No other sign will be given to that godless and that faithless generation. And before you think that's just a little bit, that's a whole lot right there because there's much more that we could say on this, but we've already hopefully have said that which is sufficient to um, inspire you or motivate you to find the truth for yourself before it's too late, before this time and this age of grace, right, is fully consummated, right? Because we're at the crossroads right now. Right. Just as the as as the Israelites and the Hebrews were right as the Rastafari and the true and the faithful um, um, Christians. Right. The Christians correspond to the Hebrews and Rastafari correspond to the children of Israel because of the lion, the true lion of the tribe of Judah. Kadamawi, Hila, 
Selassie. So a little bit more, my brothers and sisters, we already have gone well over the time that we had expected to take, but that's grace right there. And we hope and pray that John will fill you with his wisdom and enlighten your eyes to see the way, the truth, and the life out of this mystery Babylon, that you will come out of Babylon. This is the call. This is the ecclesia. This is the ek calio. This is the out calling. This is the true church of the King of Kings in Christ. Shalom Ras Tefari. Wendem Yadin here reporting.